At this time, I'll call the July 22nd, 2021 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, individual, liberty, and justice for all. We do have one addition we're going to add to the agenda. And earlier we had a the audit presentation from Barney and Associates, April Schwartz, and we will go ahead and add that to the agenda to accept uh, that audit. With that addition, I would move that we uh, approve the agenda as amended. And I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion, we have the second. Any discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the July 15th meeting, also the payroll of $432,886.88, abatements of $4,326.60, wire payments, which includes the credit cards of $22,932.07, utilities of $9,416.47. I move to accept the consent agenda. We have the motion and second to accept the consent agenda and approve it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go on to commission comments. Ron? Uh, we didn't have a North Central Regional uh, Detention Center meeting yesterday. Uh, a lot of folks are out on uh, uh, vacation. But I do want to take just a second to, uh, to set the stage for uh, what's going on down there. And, and I want to give gratitude and a compliment to previous commissioners, particularly um, Laverne Meyer, they're doing a wonderful job for setting us up for success at the Juvenile Detention Center. So I'd like to think that we, we're going there and we're doing a lot of work and we're doing some great things, but it's these folks that served before us that set the pathway to make us successful. And I want to pass that on and a big thank you to him. Okay, thank you, Craig. Nothing. Um, I'll just mention earlier today, and I, I will apologize, we didn't have it queued up or set up where everybody could hear all of our work session, but we did receive a text that we weren't online and we got that corrected partway through. But prior to that, we had Jocelyn Randall. She was here to discuss the indigent defense contract and it was something that hadn't been updated as far as the dollar amount um, for almost eight years. And so we're taking that into consideration and can probably do something with our budget on that. We also had Josh Peterson, he's the sales manager for Twin Valley, and he was just trying to get information from us as far as some areas that maybe are underserved as far as towers and as far as internet. Um, and that's something that um, there's gotta be a lot of partnerships to make that happen. And, and so that's being considered. Uh, April Swartz, she's with Barney and Associates and she presented our audit for the uh, for the year, and um, really appreciate the fact she mentioned that Janelle was a, a great person to work with, and so um, I'm not sure what that cost Janelle, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's going to cost you at least a lunch with Waiting for an email or something. <laughs> but, but anyway, you know it is good to know the, that they recognize the professionalism that our county has, and um, the, an audit can be a tough thing to go through, and you certainly have to have all the facts and figures ready um, for that audit. And um, so anyway, and we did add that to the agenda. Then Chancey Smith was here to give us an update as far as the emergency management director and some tabletop things that are going on um, here in the near future, but also in the next year. Um, I did have a Central Kansas Mental Health meeting and um, it was just our our monthly meeting, we actually are taking the next month off. Um, we meet 10 times a year. And um, so um, just a lot going on there and a lot of challenges, and but, but things are going well. Um, that's all I have. If there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and move on uh, to our uh, 
public comments. There are no petitions or proclamations today. So if there is anyone that would want to make a comment or had a question, this would be opportunity uh, to do that. I don't believe there is. Oh, Rhonda is raising her hand there. I can see it. But... Oh, okay. So yes, uh, Rhonda, if you had a comment or a question, okay. she should be live. Thank you, gentlemen. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties last week. This is Rhonda Beaupre, 201 Northeast 8th Street. Um, I'd like to comment on the software that we're using for the meeting. Um, last time uh, we were using GoToMeeting and it was working really well. I like the chat feature that it has so we can type in a message or a question to both you or to other people who are watching the chat, watching the, the video. And also we can communicate between each other when we are watching and see who else is watching. Um, I'm wondering why there was a change to what we are now using that does not have those features that we found to be very helpful. Probably every type of system has some advantages and disadvantages, but um, this was something we were, it seemed that on this part was working well, but um, we can take that under consideration. Thank you very much. I, I would really like to see the return of those uh, features that uh, we enjoyed. Okay. Thank you for your comment. And are there other comments? I don't believe we have any. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. And that would be uh, our reports from our county officers. So our first one, County Administrator Broadhead Plumman. Uh, I'll start out with just uh, updating you. We had, uh, as you're aware, we had used the uh, the West facility for home automotive during the, the pandemic for a vaccination clinic. We actually used it, I believe, 28 or 29 times uh, to set up uh, clinics there. In talking with uh, Tim Holm, he was pretty adamant that he was not going to charge us for that use of that facility. However, I do know that he had expenses that were incurred uh with uh, not only cleaning but utilities and then if you remember in the middle of that we had that really cold snap that hit and they froze some pipes and so he had a, a cleaning company come in and, and repairs were done like overnight and i know he incurred probably more expenses in that alone than what we were paying but we did get a grant uh john had applied john holder applied for a grant uh for uh paying for facilities like that and so i told tim that i didn't want him to be out as much as we appreciate him doing that and we really do appreciate the use of it uh that we would we would like to pay him so that what the number i came up with was roughly 200 dollars per day uh, to utilize that facility which equated to be about six thousand dollars so uh, he said he would he wouldn't turn it down but he wasn't asking for it and i just want to make you know make note that Without community members like that, we wouldn't be the community that we are. But uh, we are, since we do have the money for it, I felt like we wanted to at least uh, compensate him and home automotive for that. Uh, next time, we may not have the money. You know, this time we do. And it was, if we don't use it for that, we're giving it back. So I'd much rather see it going in uh, home automotive's uh, coffers than to send it back to the government that we had gotten it from. So. Well, realistically, I mean, he has his overhead with that building because he still has to have some of the heating and the water and the uh, pays taxes on it daily and insurance and so on. So um, that that's really a modest amount considering the, the benefit of the facility. The benefit we got out of it by far outweighs that amount. You're you're right. So, and we're working at this point. To hopefully, Barb will be able to use it for elections in November as well if the courthouse isn't available. So. But uh, we certainly, I can't go and say enough, appreciate his uh, our, uh, ability to give that to that service to us. So, uh, construction update, we had our uh, two week meeting on Monday and I won't go into all the details, but uh, things are progressing. We're on the downhill side of 
of the jail construction. I also provided you a, a schedule for the, the uh, jail construction as we complete here. And so far the last couple of days that has held true. Uh, we're getting uh, the painters finished up. The parking lot will be painted next week. The kitchen will be done on the 27th. And at that point, our food service vendor can start putting in inventory and actually using that kitchen if they would like to take the food upstairs to the, the old jail. Uh, but uh, we're continuing the active controls uh, people who are the ones that, are, that do all the uh, controls of the door locks and the video camera and stuff. We've got one of their crews on site that showed up uh, Tuesday morning and they'll be here until uh, from now until we open the jail up uh, doing uh, the final installs, testing, retesting, making sure things are working. Uh, and then also they'll be here for the training of staff and for our, uh, when we move the inmates in to make sure everything transitions like it's supposed to. Uh, we've got uh, on August 5th, our plan is to move the jail supplies into the, the jail. We've got them stored off site in containers and stuff. Uh, the things that we had to purchase new. Uh, my plan at this point is on the evening of August 5th, I'm gonna do a, uh, a tour, special tour for our PVC members. Uh, and then also the, uh, the uh, jail advisory committee that we utilized back when we were trying to sell this to the public. I've got letters that will go out to them today. And then on August 7th, the Saturday from 10 to four, uh, we're gonna hold an open house. So uh, we'll get that publicized and and uh, that'll be open probably the only time it will ever be open to a, an open house uh, to, to show what this project's all about and what uh, everyone's tax dollars are paying for. So we'll allow people to walk through, we'll have uh, designated tour guides to go through and so many in a group and good turnout that's the Saturday the fair it is yeah, yeah it's the start of the fair so we shot have plenty of people in town so um, and then the following week uh, we're going to get the software and the computers and everything moved over we'll check it for check it out and then on, on August 11th knock on wood we're going to move everything in there and then we'll move inmates over as well so uh, we that's the time we Time, the day we've been looking for, the, the time we've been looking for for the last 24 months. So uh, hopefully things will hold true to that and nothing surprises us. And and uh, we still have other work to do. The elevator, it's still being worked on, but it goes to nowhere because the second floor of the courthouse isn't done. So that can continue to be worked on while the jails are functioning. It's out, there's separation between those. and So things will continue on as planned. So. Uh, we did get a visit from fire marshal this week and had some issues we had uh, they had up to their standards a little bit uh, we were able to provide them a, uh, a drawing that was given to us by our architect uh, on egress routes out of the existing jail in case there was a fire i just got the email a little bit ago from them that it's been approved and so we'll be able to uh, that that extra work should be done today or tomorrow and we'll be back to working like we were in the courthouse. Things are working well there. Uh, the top floor uh, painters will be moving in on the top floor of the courthouse Monday to start painting. Uh, of course, the, the, the way things work is you get all the walls primed and painted, uh, and then the uh, people come in and the electricians at the same time are working on pushing wire through the conduits, and, and then they come in and put the ceilings in, and and the floors will go in and then we're pretty much done. So that all sounds very simplified. It's gonna take a while, but getting the painters in is a good step. So good start. Uh, I did talk, uh, the our, our CM has talked to the elevator company in regards to the existing elevator in the courthouse. And as you're aware, you know, they had originally provided us a bid to do that work. It was in the guaranteed maximum price that you guys agreed to. They came back then after the project got going and said, oh, wait a minute, we can't put a new elevator in that shaft, it's too small. Should have thought about that when you come and looked at it, I would have thought, but I'm not an elevator guy. Uh, so they said, we need to regroup and look at option B. And so they came back and said, okay, option B is we can use, we'll have to use the same carriage, uh, but we'll replace the cables, we'll replace the motors, we'll replace all the electronics with current stuff, uh, and then we'll redo the inside of the carriage so it looks like it's new. Uh, for X dollars and net, the good news is that'll be less than what their original bid was. So uh, 
Uh, the only question they had was, do you want stainless steel on the inside for walls or do you want to go back with something deco or something? I said, just do stainless steel. <laughs> so it'll be easier to clean. And, and uh, so anyhow, they will redo everything. It'll look like a brand new elevator when you step into it. It'll work like a new one. Uh, so that was that was the, the good and the bad news for this week. So we're continuing on with that and moving forward. So. Uh, I sent you an email in regards to the uh, generator issue, and we talked about that a little bit uh, in the work session. But other than that, things are moving along uh, very rapidly right now, and uh, hopefully by the open house, we'll have everything cleaned up and ready to go through that. So uh, you've got a, a, a document there that shows that we uh, what we collected from our last Purple Wave auction. We did not sell a lot of items on there. We had one vehicle and some items of road and bridge, but it did clean a little over $7,400. So that's money that otherwise would have been just scrap price for some of that metal. So we were happy with that. Uh, I also provided you a document from John. Of course, you heard from me last week, but shows the COVID numbers. Uh, in the last week, the current week, we've had uh, 47, which is up from the previous two weeks. Uh, we were seeing uh, an increase. However, John says that still we're at 97% or so of the people that are testing positive are people that did not get the vaccination. People that have been vaccinated are not, we're not seeing those uh, people getting ill, or at least not to the point where they're, they're being reported. So, uh, you know, I know people have reasons for not wanting to be vaccinated as well as they do for being vaccinated, but uh, we certainly are continuing to encourage people to get vaccinated to help those numbers. We, I will say we are still not, we're concerned, but we're not alarmed, you know, at those numbers. So uh, hopefully that, hopefully we're seeing a small spike and it'll go back down. So the last thing I have is just a brief update on the, uh, the paving projects. Martin, I talked to him yesterday afternoon. He said they are just, they were going to finish up with a few more loads on rain road yesterday or last night, and they would have all of rain and 3,400 done. <coughs> And then uh, they were going to spend this afternoon moving equipment over to Fair Road. And starting Monday, they'll be working Fair Road. I don't know whether they're going to go north or south first, but I, I, they'll be working from, I believe, I-70 up to, to Talmadge to K-18. That's the last section of road that we have to pave this, this season. And uh, we did have a couple of truck breakdowns, but hopefully they'll have them back going first of the week and we can continue to, to move along there. And they, I'm guessing Fair Road will probably take them a week and a half, and then they'll be done paving. So that's all I've got, unless you have any questions. Okay. Thank you, Doug. No, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. And Doug, I will mention, uh, I said something to you between the meetings on that uh, defense contract. I I think kind of the direction we're going and Janelle had mentioned budget wise that we could work out to probably put some sort of increase that they requested in place because the funded contract fund had not been adjusted for like eight years so you know if the case numbers have gone up uh, in those eight years uh, gone up and uh, of course we want to keep the good staff that's involved with it, the good group of attorneys so that seems fair well, sounds like you positive recommendation on your part if you follow that. They're all in good people to work with. Right. And that contract ends at the end of this calendar year. So the new contract, once you board makes a decision, why then I can draft the new contract for the attorney. Okay, good. Okay, um, we'll go to notices and communications. We just had a few things. Also, this needs to be signed. Um, we had a uh, notice on the Honorable Michael Powers, and he's the Chief District Court Judge and is retiring, and they are having a reception for him on August 20th. But also, a person could do that by Zoom if they are unable to attend there at the Marion County Courthouse. We also have a certificate that the work has been completed on the project that was with CDBG funds. And it said all the pertinent documents also have been filed. 
and so so it's good to have that particular project uh, finished. And so this is our official notification of that. Um, also, OCCK had sent us some information, and it's just on the busing routes that they have here in the Abilene area. And so they've given this, uh, Barb, I can send this with you. They just said to go ahead and if we can put this out in a public place, they have some extra um, pamphlets for us. And of course, we're kind of spread out with all the work going on at the courthouse, but um, we're glad to hear from them and glad they're, they've expanded their service and getting the word out. I do not believe we have any resolutions. There's no unfinished business. Uh, before we have our conditional use permit to consider, um, I think we'll go ahead that one particular add-on that we had. We had Varney and Associates here this morning. They presented the audit to the commission. And so we should probably just as a matter of record, if we approve and accept the re audit report, uh, we could do that by motion. So is there a motion to mm -hmm. do that? We have the motion. I'll second it. And we have the second that we go ahead and accept the financial statements and independent audit report from Varney and Associates. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. And I know that uh, you know, I talked about putting the, uh, the audit service out for proposal for the next three years. I don't know whether that's something you want to consider. If they're willing to do it another year under the same contract, that might be an option that we want to secure because I, I can only assume that any proposals we put out, their prices are going to go up. Well, that, and I know on, on Central Kansas Mental Health, for example, the firm that was doing the audit before said, you know, we really don't do audits. And, um, and I think we've heard that from some others. There's some groups that specialize and to, get that locked in at the price. Um, yeah, I, with a single audit too, because we will have that again for next you think, years. Okay, what do you think? We'd just go ahead and do that now? Or that would be my recommendation, I'm sure. On the agenda, agenda next, next week. So they've done an excellent job, not because they've commented positively about us, but they are very thorough and they're easy to work with. I'm not doing anything to do now. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, I, I do like the support that they give because, I mean, they're only a phone call away, but also, I mean, they are in Manhattan, so they're readily available, and it's it's good to have some of the familiar faces, and they have stringent guidelines they have to follow that we have to follow also. So I, is there a motion to go ahead and continue that contract for another year? So I'll second that. Okay. We have the motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Maybe should, we should have asked them for two years or three, so. Had you already sent that letter out yet? Mm, well, okay. uh, so, yeah. I know we talked about it, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, good. That takes care of, of something that we're going to have on our plate anyway. Okay. So now we have a conditional use permit, and um, this is for aggregate. Trails Co-op, it's an extension of their facility. And so um, if you want to go ahead and present okay. the report. They have your packet, Tim, so. Okay, okay good deal. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, consideration of a CUP for a basically an ag fertilizer sales and storage facility to be located west of their current facility. Uh, on July 15th, the planning commission uh, is re recommended approval with the following conditions, which is to maintain any Sorry, Barb. I didn't see that. Okay. 
perfect and lost man. Okay, so the area you're looking at is right, right here. Yeah. And uh, they basically, uh, what this is, is they're just wanting to expand uh, or actually move their retail fertilizers, uh, sales, and storage onto this parcel, uh, and that way they can. Uh, it gives them more room for the trucks to get in and out, and uh, basically that leaves the the remainder that what what whatever services they're providing on their existing facility there on the east side uh, to to. Have a little more room and flexibility, but it's a, this is this was I think this has been probably in the works for a while, and uh, they acquired this property uh, recently, and uh, it's uh, as I say, the planning commission didn't have any issues with it. Uh, recommended unanimously to approve on uh, the fifteenth. And as long as they maintain a road maintenance agreement with the Hope Township, that's what they'll be okay, whatever requirements of the state. To the west of it, they're going to have to bring in, they're going to use dirt from that to build up the floor and stuff? Yeah, probably to build up the, the elevator. They're going to take out the idea. Right. You know, how much are they going to, is it going to be? They didn't, they didn't specify. It's going to be, though, I mean, I'm, what I'm saying is it's going to hold water, so it's going to be. Is that deep or not? You don't know. I, I I do not know. I'm thinking that it's it's probably going to hold a little bit of water, but it's 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 going to. I don't think it's going to be much. Craig, the reason I say that I was down there the other day, and okay. they've already pretty well got the floor oh, established. Okay. Yeah. Because Kim told them they could move dirt, they just couldn't do building yet until it was approved. Okay. Oh, yeah. And and so where they took the dirt out of, there's not much of it in there. Yeah, there's not much there. Yeah, three it almost months. looked like they're terracing things and okay. and doing it for drainage. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, I just didn't want to see a mosquito breeding ground. But, right. You know, you know, right. Not that this time you have to worry about it. But, right. You know, right. Okay. So do do we actually have to have a hearing on this though, or do we just approve this? You just you know, like the hearing was already done with. Already the, done. But we don't have to have the hearing with the commission because well, we have a hearing if somebody protested. Right. You just have to. Yeah. Uh, Neighbors were notified. Right. Okay. Finding of the planning commission. Just okay. want to make sure procedurally we. Okay. No comments from the public or any other agencies on this. Uh, and, uh, at the meeting, there was it was just AgriTrail showed up, and that was it. Okay. And also, I, I think I told you, but they're also working with Chuck at the EDC on a tax abatement uh, for this improvement. Uh, it's what six point nine million, I think, is what they're putting into it. So it'll be pretty healthy, but. Uh, We've kind of delayed that to work on that until after this is approved and they're going uh, so that they can get full benefit of that. So no use of approving it now and having one year tick off when there's nothing there. So they get abatement on nothing. So yeah. And Angry Trails has done a good job of, of working within that framework because they purchased the land from the, an individual who had owned it for many, many years. They had shared that information with the uh, community about what they were doing, and this looks like this would be a, a very good project for in that area, especially that location. Yeah. Good to see a local business like that expand. So. Okay, are there additional questions or comments? We could entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the use permit. And I'll second it. We have the motion to approve the conditional use permit for AgriTrails Co-op. This is expanding their facility, which is at 1652 700 Avenue. Is there any other question or comment? And as mentioned earlier, I will just point out too, this did go through the Planning Commission. They had their hearing, it was a 4-0 vote, it was unanimous. 
There also um, were no comments from the public as far as concerns when they were notified uh, procedurally of this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's all we have. Is there a motion to adjourn? I, before we do, I'd like to make a note that I will be attending the Michael Powers uh, retirement uh, 20th of August at 3.30. I'm not going to see that the commissioner will be, but I'm going to be out of town, so I will not be able to attend. But you put down the bar of ledges to make Rhonda's Okay. Did you guys get something from the Tri County Chamber of Commerce about their banquet in August? I don't know where I saw that, if I saw it in the paper. You had something. But I meant to ask you, should I put that on the calendar? When is that in August? August the 21st. At and I'll be gone also on that. Okay. And I saw the comes under that one, so you might. Okay. I found the Community Foundation's banquet's coming up too. I saw somewhere in the paper or something. I guess. Oh yeah, the 29th. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, if see that. I'm not planning on attending that. I'm going to be out of town. I I put my camera on the front door, so I'll probably be attending. I saw your picture is missing on the last yeah, publication, you know, so I, I, just don't like my I could get them one. <laughs> <laughs> Try to help you out. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.